be listing later on in the service. We'll be naming the names and shining the toll for all of our loved ones who have passed away in the past 12 months. We have a list that I will be reading, but if there is anyone who would like to add to the names, you may speak them or add them to the chat online. So we encourage you, if you do not share publicly, please hold such names in your heart as we celebrate life and remembrance today. And I think we have a message from our moderator. No, we do not. I apologize. <laughs> oh, okay. Our choir is preparing while I do announcements. Okay. We want to thank everyone who was a part of the craft and bizarre bake sale. There were many people who baked, who created things, who set things up beautifully and um, shopped, spread the word, and cleaned up. We want to thank also all those who set up for the, for the funeral yesterday and who stayed after to wash dishes and create wonderful hospitality for the to for our family in need. Today, after worship, we will have an all-church meeting. For those of you joining us online, you will find the Zoom link in your email account or on the private Facebook group. And uh, we will switch over to our Zoom meeting directly after worship. So we'll have a maybe five or ten minute intermission and then do our Zoom and all church in-person meetings. So we encourage you to come and participate. Church council is this Tuesday at 6 o'clock. If you have any items to take to council, uh, the list of council members is in our newsletter, and we encourage you to reach out either to the church staff or the conference, or to the, to the church staff or the council members. Also, because the leaves are finally giving up and falling to the ground, we are inviting people to come to a all-church cleanup on this Saturday at 9 o'clock. If you are able to bring a rake and help us do some uh, preparatory groundskeeping as we prepare for winter, we would love to have that help. Are there any other special announcements? Oh, Lee. Fellowship Circle Thursday at 1 o'clock here at the church. So, yeah, as Fellowship Circle this Thursday at 1 o'clock here at the church, and uh, all women are invited and welcome to come and participate in the program and fellowship. Are there any others? Mary. I have four meetings on Tuesday night, so if anybody has any questions for me, today would be a good day to ask them, because obviously I won't be there. All right, so if you have uh, comments, questions, or concerns for the sexton, Marion is our junior sexton, and he will be fielding all of those today so that uh, he can get ahead of the game. Are there any others? Then let us begin worship as we are led into this space by our choir. Thank you. 
stewardship, we recognize all which we carry into this space. For all those prayers of concern and sorrow that weigh down your hearts and keep you from praising God, may we give space to offer them now. May we give up and surrender these prayers so that God might work God's will. For our prayers of celebration, may we lift them in praise and recognize all good gifts come from God. Let us pray. Gracious and wondrous God, we know that throughout our week we build up prayer and sometimes we offer and surrender and sometimes we cling to them believing that we are in charge. May you help us to give to you today all, all of our prayers of anxiety and sorrow, heartache and mourning, all of our prayers of celebration and joy. Lord God, you give great gifts. You give great support in times of heartache and when in need of healing, you are there. May we give our prayers to you, so that may, we may leave this space of worship focused on your goodness and your love, and prepared to enter the world carrying your light and your life to all we need. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in singing our hymn, hymn number 400, Christ Has Made a Sure Foundation.
that laboreth in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil. For he gives sleep to his beloved. Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the sons of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. Our next hymn is 295, I Sing a Song of the Saints of God. <laughs> And they, and uh, one pastor in particular said something like, 
oh, we're not like you folks, we don't believe in saints. And I thought that was such an interesting distinction because I never think of us as saint believers. As the United Church of Christ, we are believers in the sainthood of all believers. We don't believe in saints as people who carry our prayers to God because we have the power to go directly to God. But saints instead are those who live in our memories as guides to faith. So there's no special fancy ceremony that brings someone into sainthood. It is the fact that they are loved and recognized as being a vessel for the Holy Spirit. And that Spirit spoke through them to others. When we say sainthood at St. John's, that is what we mean. We talk about saints being all who believe. Because that is the hope that we are all coming to sainthood by sharing the Spirit with others. When places of worship, when Christian churches are built, oftentimes it is with that in mind is with the fact that this is going to be a roof over that sainthood for those living and those who have gone before us. It is meant to be a space of heaven on earth. These buildings have steeples that point to the heavens as in there is God. Look at that grandioseness. We create windows and lighting that bring in that heavenly glow. We put on our walls the remembrances of others who have gone before us, scriptures that inspire us. We create space that is warm and welcoming as we can, and each generation we change a little and keep a lot. Each Christian community deals with their space of worship a little differently, but many will work on their space to say this is a space of heaven here on earth. It is a beautiful testament to God, and it is also an incredible stumbling block. Because as much as we talk about heaven on earth, God help us, we know it is never meant to be contained within walls. And the human hubris that we have to say that it is only here is limited thinking. We are called to be saints outside of these walls, to take the spirit from this space. But we come to this space to be renewed and reborn. Over my years of being a pastor and leading up to pastoring, just being a Christian in general, sometimes you get into these conversations with people about what they see heaven as being when they die. And it is amazing to me how many different images people have. Mike has been deep into studies lately about near-death experiences where people pass away in body and they have these experiences, and when they are brought back, they, are, they remember. 
But in the end, the core of the heaven that we are called to cling to and called to build here on earth and hereafter is that beautiful image of all belonging and great acceptance and love where individuals can finally find peace and communities can regather in hope. This sanctuary is meant to be a slice of heaven, not for us to preserve indefinitely because even the greatest preservation will eventually fail, but for us to build in our hearts and find renewal this day. So that we might build a kingdom of heaven here on earth that helps to point others to the hope that leads us to faith in the future. Today, for Totu Fest, we recognize those who have gone before us, who have given us a slice of heaven here on earth and they live in our memories in the way that they shared their spirit. And we hold and treasure them today. And so we begin the reading of our names. Haley Devereaux. Nelda Olden Spanky. Evan Stuck. We remember all those who have gone before us. And if you have a name you would like to speak, I invite you to share it now. Marilyn Weber. Julianne Weber. Penny Chamberlain.
Let us say again what we believe. We believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, and we know that in everything, God works for good for with those who love God. We are called according to God's purpose. We are sure that either death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
bake and eat, for this is the body of Christ given to you. And take and drink, for this is the cup of the new covenant poured for you and for the world.
shine upon you and be gracious unto you now and forever. Amen. Amen.